Hey YouTube. So now, just recently I changed the uh, motor oil on this uh, LT15 and there isn't an air cleaner that I don't blow out at least once or twice throughout the year before I change them. So I blew this one out already and uh, what I want to do here is put a new one in. They do get pretty dirty. This foam piece you can take off of here and just blow out. But you can't see through this at all. Whereas you can see through this one. I just want to set this. I would say that just by how dirty this this one here is, I would say that it would be a good idea to um, to change these filters a little more often than you would do something like your car, for instance, because it really does get a lot of dust up in there. I mean, all the sawdust is blowing all over the place right here, so. Make sure this is good and tight. I'm going to go blow that foam thing off with some compressed air. You don't want to use too much air pressure for these, especially the paper filters when you're blowing them out, because what will happen is you'll, uh, let me just get the video up here. You can see how that goes in there. It's just a matter of taking the wing nut off there. That metal piece comes off of the filter and uh, put the new filter in. But like I was saying, you can't even see through there. I mean, you're looking right up at the sun there and got nothing. So, got to keep that clean pretty regularly. So I've changed it. This is a one-year anniversary of me having this thing. I'm going to do a one-year review here. The thing is, is um, I haven't changed the filter in one year, but I have blown it out. Now, I would recommend that you probably get maybe two filters a year at least at least two filters a year and then blow them out you know like every maybe maybe every three months blow it out then replace it on the sixth month blow it out on the ninth replace it on the twelfth month might be a good pattern for these we'll, we'll see from what I can see though it needs more changing than not it's better if you change them more often okay so I blew that foam piece there out and replace and uh, put that back on here. It doesn't need replacing. It's not torn or anything and uh, it's really not that dirty that foam. When I blew it out hardly anything came out of it. You can wash them in water. Some people say you can wash the filters. I know uh, they recommend washing some filters. This is not one of them that I replaced it with. It's a paper filter and it, they just don't hold up. You wet them and they'll fall apart. Okay, so we're going to start this one-year review on this thing. Um, just some of the very basic things. First of all, uh, I, I think I spend a lot of time cleaning up. Believe me, it's the wood miser makes a lot of dirt. I think that the best thing you could do if you're not going to be cleaning up is to put it somewhere where you, you can let the sawdust you know, go not far from where the machine is. Now over in here, where you see all this sawdust, um, I'm about two feet higher than I am everywhere else. So what I've been doing is mixing sawdust with dirt and just pushing it off. Soon I'll be ending that there. I think I'm going to cut around three little more trees down or so over there just to, so I have a place to put the sawdust. But I have people that are taking it, so as long as I have it in the loader bucket, it's not hard to get rid of. But as far as the one-year review goes, I think if there was... One thing that's annoying on this to me is probably the water tank. Um, it seems like it's excessively high for some reason. I mean, you know, it's not easy to get at. I know that I'm off the ground about, I don't know, 
12 inches more than what someone else might be but it works really well for me to be off the ground like this at my age you know for just for your saving your back and stuff it's not that I really have a lot of back trouble I don't but I'm just saying you know it's a nuisance to reach up there and be getting it and handling handling it um, I don't know if this bracket could be moved down I've never really looked at it it does last a while though when you're um, using the water it's not like you got to put it in there every 10 minutes you know it's it can last you a couple of days if you're just leaving a trickle out and from what I've seen the other thing that was a little bit of a nuisance was that you know what if you don't have the if you've never used the sawmill before like this and you are not used to the sounds that it makes when the blade hits something, that was my biggest problem this past year. The blade had hit an oak log, a nail in an oak log I was working on. And then all of a sudden, you know, the blade was dipping and diving and carrying on. Okay, so I changed the blade. Well, guess what? I didn't, without even knowing it, I hit another nail in the same tree. And it just seemed like there was something wrong with the blade or the machine rather than, you know, the problem I was having. The problem was not the machine. The problem was not the blades. The problem was that I was hitting stuff and I couldn't tell, you know, what I was hitting. So, uh, I guess the other thing that I worry about, but it's not, you know, a big deal, is um, there's no way to start this without a starter. Now, I have a, a big uh, Briggs & Stratton V-twin motor and I can pull that over with a rope if I have to, but it doesn't have a starter. Now I don't know if they do this, you know, like you, you can either get a starter or no starter, but it would be nice if there was a way to pull this just in case the battery was dead. And, you know, talking about the battery, that's something I want to check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this. And I have a little tester here. It's not a biggie. It's not, um... Just see if I can't set this up here somehow. It's not a big tester. So let me wind the motor up. So the motor's running. And what I want to do is just make sure that this thing is charging real well. You can see it's up in the normal there. The green light is flashing. So, it bothers me. It bothers me a little bit that there's no other way to start this than, you know, with the uh, rope pull on it. Of course, I wasn't thinking of that when I bought it. And I, I there's probably something I can get from Kohler to put onto this, to put a rope on it. And the reason I say this is because, you know, I've seen a lot of guys, like the other day, N.W. Sawyer had some problems with his head going up and down and, and something was wrong with the circuit board. Now, I don't have that type of setup, and I, I'm actually glad I don't. I'm glad it's all manual. However, you know, if the starter's not working or if the battery's dead, it's going to be a big nuisance to try and get that thing going. So I would really rather... That, uh, not that I would rather replace this. I like the electric start, especially in the winter time. But I would like to have a rope start on there as well. That's something, after having it a year, you know, and just looking at it, I think that's something that uh, should be added to them, rather than uh, electronic stuff. Just add that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to comment on was... I get a lot of people talking about the rope, you know, they, oh, the ropes to travel. You know, I, I don't see a problem with this. Uh, sometimes when the rope gets wet, it does slip on here a little bit. And maybe it's because it's not tight enough, I could make it tighter. Um, sometimes you get some buildup of sawdust in here, which you can see right there is some now. And this is why I want to do the year review, because I want to clean some of this. But, um... The rope shows no signs of wear or tear. Now I did have um, the rope jumped off one time and since I've had it. And the reason the rope jumped off was because a log had uh, hit this end of the rope and it pulled it up 
and it was just barely catching and when I started using it come off. But it was nothing that had to do with the wood miser. Um, as far as the rest of it goes, I mean it, after a year of cutting and I cut 5,500 5, board feet of lumber, the only marks here, little bit of marks, you know, and this isn't even from logs, it's actually from me using the cant hook is that over there. This, this side where the paint's off, there's a mark all the way down there and apparently there's something inside there that rubs inside that arm. I'm, I haven't had it apart. I'm not going to take it apart right now. It's just, you know, that's the only place the paint has really worn off. I mean, even after turning the logs and everything and all that acidy stuff from the red oak, you can see there's, it, it's not bad for a year. I mean, a whole year. Uh, Probably the other thing, and guys say you can change these. They, they say you can move these, like say move it on this side. My problem is I'm a creature of habit, and I got so accustomed to it being where it is and not having to reach down for these with them resting on here that I kind of like them where they are. So I'm not going to change that. Uh, I did. Um, I, I don't like the idea that these sides here, the stops, are supposed to hold flitches to me they, that doesn't work and that's why I made the flitch holders but I'm not saying that you can't move these around to make this better the the, the uh, dogs you probably can but as far as I'm concerned from what I see you know after a year of using this thing it has very little wear I have not had to replace any kind of belts or anything inside of it the guide wheels are are free and you know, they're not ex worn excessively or anything like that. I mean, everything seems good on it as far as I'm concerned. I, I really don't have an issue with anything that's like an, on an ongoing problem. You know, no ongoing problems. So, I mean, like I say, if it was up to me, I think I would do something with that water bottle. Because that's just, it, it's just a, a little bit of a pain to try and, uh, you know... I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just my age, but it's kind of a pain putting it all the way up there that high. But uh, I really like the mill a lot. I mean, I, I like I say, I had it for a year. I've cut 5,500 board feet of lumber with it. The lumber came out perfect. The, you know, I took a gamble here. What I said was, in the beginning of the year, is that I'm going to cut, you, I bought the sawmill. To, to offset the cost of redwood or red oak uh, trim for the house, and the oak that I got, and the, and all the other wood that I've cut, I haven't even kept track of the pine as much as I should have. I've probably cut closer to seven thousand board feet because of my neighbors and stuff. But I got to tell you, this thing has paid for itself because of the red oak. I put out no money for molding at all, and I'm making all the molding I need. I did have to spend about 7,500 for this, so I'm going to call it 8,000 because of traveling to get it. 8,000 for the mill, um, another 2,000 for the um, kiln, and that's only because I poured concrete. If I wouldn't have poured a concrete floor, it probably would have been a lot, you know, less. The the polycarbonate's a little pricey, but Hey, at last, I've had polycarbonate on my greenhouse for quite a few years, and it, it's just good stuff. It seems to hold up. The, the sun doesn't bother it. Now, there is some polycarbonate. It's not even polycarbonate. There's plastic or PVC you can buy that's clear, looks sort of clear. I would not recommend that stuff, so you got to be careful what you buy. All right, like I say, uh, the sawdust and stuff, which is not really part of the actual mill itself. Um... As far as uh, other problems with it, uh, there are none. I, I haven't had any. Um, every now and then I put transmission fluid. They recommend you put transmission fluid. Um, there's a wiper. There's two little wipers over on this thing right here. So I'm going to oil them up today. All you do is loosen the nuts and you can get at the wipers. And then over here there's a long wiper from one end to the other. You can see there's a nut. Uh, where am I pointing here? There's a nut right in there, I believe it is, that you can, uh, or a bolt, two bolts, you take it off, you oil the wiper, put it back on. 
as far as this chain goes, you know, it's hit, hit or miss. Should you oil the chain, should you not? Because you're getting sawdust on it. Uh, what I did was I squirted a little WD-40 on it now and then just to make sure it's going to run okay. Now I noticed there's a little bit of sawdust on things, but nothing's really built up that bad. You know, so a good thorough cleaning is probably all that it should have after a year. And I do take care of it. I mean, you guys know I do a lot of cleaning up. I'm, I'm a little fussy about that because I don't like... It, it makes it easier for you to see what's happening and it also makes it better for you to work. Now this thing is dusty right now and could use a good dusting. Um, sometimes when you start just some sawdust will blow out of this thing, but hey, you know, it's pulling in air to keep cool, so I guess the dust is just part of the problem and the way things are. But uh, the other thing, um, I don't know if they even say it in the manual or not, but this rod that goes in here to adjust these, the guide bearing, um, I think it's a good idea to put a little bit of oil on that every now and then. It doesn't really build up too much with sawdust, but it gets a little bit tight when you're trying to pull it in there. You sort of got to put effort af after it rather than just an easy pull or not, you know, to adjust that guide bearing. But it's not a big deal, like I say. I mean, you know, if you're a young guy, I'm sure that, you know, handling this would be a lot easier for you than it is for me. I mean, it goes all the way over there. It does a good job holding the blade straight. <coughs> um, some of the guys that I've talked to, or that have written me, you know, buying new mills, they, they're saying about, like, they hit this or they hit that. I'll just go over with you some of the things I've hit. You can see that I've hit this. Took a good bite out of that. This is when I first got the mill. I've also rode on this a little bit. So, on one of the stops, uh, I've hit this one. Don't even know how I hit this one going backwards or somehow. But I hit that one. I don't know if I hit this one or not. No. Or yeah, I did right along the edge here. You can see the teeth. It was probably like that and I just caught the edge of that. So, you know, that's just something that's part of the game. I mean, you got to, if you don't have you know, something that's uh, automatic or hydraulic or, um, you know, an auto setting thing, you do have to realize that you're going to hit stuff. The thing that I've come to learn is with this gauge, if you're in the yellow, it's possible you're going to hit something. So the best thing to do is to check it first. But, you know, you get in the habit where before you run the saw down the log, you you will check it. Now, the other thing is when you do hit something like that, you need to replace the blade. Chances are the blades are kinked or warped or bent, and it's just not worth trying to fix that one tooth or two teeth or whatever it is that are bad, because sometimes you can't identify them. So I've come to the conclusion when it comes to um, the, uh, the blades is if you hit something, just take it and change it. Stop fooling with it. Just get rid of it and put on a new one. So what I've done here, um, well, I had the camera up there for a minute. I actually, or actually for about a half an hour, I went through and tightened all the bolts. And I got to tell you that there was no bolt on this thing anywhere, along everywhere, everywhere on the tracks and all, that was loose. One of the, I think, if anything, this bolt on this one dog seemed to be, you know, it took, took a turn and a half to snug it up. But other than that, it stays adjusted. The feet stay adjusted on it. Uh, I'm going to grab a level yet and just show you how, you know, level the, the whole thing has been since I put it together. Now, before I go into the leveling up stuff, I took a little bit of WD-40 and I put it on the, um, the dogs down at the bottom here. And just a, not even a coating, just a little bit of a spray on this nut, or this bolt. This bolt adjusts this cant of, or not the cant, but the uh, tilt of this backstop. So this is what keeps the the, law, the boards plumb to the bed when you go to cut them. So you want to make sure that those are all, you know, on a 90 to the bed. So, and I've had no problem with any of those. Everything keeps its adjustment. Once you adjust it, you don't have to be playing around with it, you know, keeping on checking it. Everything stays the way it's supposed to stay. 
like I say, I've had no problems with these guide bearings or anything after, like I, I, I know for certain I've done 5,500 board feet, so I'll just stick with that number for now. Uh, this, the dial and all, I, I don't have a problem with the dial. Once you know how to use it, you don't, you don't have to use any math at all to really cut uh, precise cutting. And it's only a waste of time for you to sit there and try and figure things out when you can use this dial. It's graduated in 16th, which is very nice, and the saw is capable of cutting within a 16th. So, you know, it's not where they've made a dial as if to uh, make you think that it can cut within a 16th, and then you end up not being able to do that. It does adjust to that 16th, and you can make a big difference in how, you know, how you cut. Uh, some of the, well, I'll just go get the level. Let me get the level and I'll show you how this thing has been leveled up yet and how it stayed. I want to check it for my own use anyway. Now I have a four foot level on there. And if you look close at the bubble, you can see the bubble is in the center of the level. And uh, what you want to do is try and catch three of the, um, <coughs> the bunks at the same time to make sure that the level stays, you know, where it is. It's very close there. It looks like it, <coughs> it might be off a hair, but it's not enough for me to worry about. <coughs> so what I do <coughs> is just check from one to the other. And if it's level all the way down here like that, there's really... Uh, dead level there. There's really nothing for you to concern yourself with. And you can see that it's nice and level that way. It's also level the other way. I've checked that a number of times. Um, I'm just back up there. I hope you can see that. It's level. Um, it's important the one, the one thing I don't like about some of these mills that are on a trailer, I noticed that, like, some of the some of the mills, when guys are loading them, the frames are twisting, the legs aren't down all the way, the legs aren't supporting the frame. I'm just going to tell you something. You can take this for what it's worth, but. I have owned all kinds of heavy equipment, and I can tell you that the biggest crane uh, boom that can pick up 25 or 30 tons or even more will buckle and bend if the stress from the weight is in the wrong place. This bunk here, from all, for all intents and purposes, from what I can see and what I've figured out, this bunk is made to hold a log approximately 36, or what is this thing, 27 inches? Let's say 27 inches in diameter. I believe that's what it cut. But regardless, it's made to handle the log that can fit on here. Now, um, let me just tell you that no matter what happens, there you can destroy any kind of a frame. So... If you don't have all these legs down and they're not taking weight, okay, you are actually twisting your frame and you're, you're causing the machine to uh, have to overcome stress that it doesn't need to if you have it supported properly. That's the only thing I don't like about the mills that I see that are on trailers. If I owned a mill on a trailer, I think I would make some blocks that take up a bigger area just to set the um, the, the uh, support legs on because from what I see they're bouncing all over the place. This thing is solid as a rock. I mean I have lag bolts in there and they're not all the way down because I did want it to be able to move slightly if it had to rather than break it. So sometimes you'll see a, you know if I put something really heavy I might get a little bit of a vibration to it when it when I drop something and I, I do drop stuff. Sometimes you can't help it. You know, you're working with the hydraulics and you're sweated up and you're in a hurry and sometimes you just push the lever. All it, all it takes is an eighth of an inch and you're 
dropping the log. Now I, I do notice one thing here, I hadn't noticed it before. This dog is fine, but if you look over at this dog here, and, and, you, and you're right about, I think, at the... I don't know if I can see it in the camera. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that pipe that's right here, if I come back, you can see that that pipe has a little bit of a bow in it. And what happened was, it's not the wood miser's problem, what happened was I was pulling the gosh darn chain with the backhoe and, you know, you're by yourself, I can't see everything. And I put a little bit of a hump in it right there. I'd be able to see it if I back up with this camera. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of a hump in it. It doesn't hurt it. It, it didn't stop it from working or anything. I mean, uh, the dog travels easy over there, so I'm not going to do nothing with that. But other than that, after a year, I have no complaints, you know, other than the water tank. But, you know, that's just myself. I could bring a ladder over here every time I put it up there and, or just keep one here. I just didn't do it. The other thing that I think should be, um, I noticed that in the winter time, even if you get a little bit of ice on the the uh, Acme thread there on the dog, it actually gets harder to turn, okay? So I, I, I have been spraying a little bit of oil on those just to make that thing a little bit easier to use. So, that guys, I wish there could be more to the one-year review. I wish it could be a little bit more exciting and tell you about all the problems or whatever, but... I have had no problems, you know, other than the blade, and the blades were my own fault. I, I did not know I was hitting nails, and, and, the, and it was only two logs I had that had nails in. All the rest were fine, or when one pine tree had a, a piece of lead in it, but that didn't affect the blade. I like the way that it's designed. I like the way it works. Um, it's been a great year I've had with it. I, I, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's been as tiring as can be. I mean, running a sawmill, manual mill, is not easy. And if you think it is easy, think again. I don't care how old you are. I mean, you know, I, I'm slow and steady. And when I was younger, I was pretty brutal on stuff. I, I was a heck of a worker as a kid. But I can tell you that uh, this thing is made to take it. You know, it, it can take it. it. It can take a little abuse. I'm not saying it's, you know, you can't be beaten on it with a sledgehammer, but I'm just saying. The mistakes that you might make while you're working with this, and, and they should be few because you should really be uh, careful with what you're doing with this thing. Um, you can see here, let's see, I think they're on the other side, uh, where I have lag bolts in there, in those feet. And none of that stuff has really gotten rusty. Now this here looks like it's rust, but it's actually the the dirt from the, or the juice from the red oak. You can actually take that off of there. A uh, little bit of paint here and there, like right there on that one bunk. That's paint from us trying to paint the ends of the logs while, we're go while we go, so we didn't have to stop and paint them later. But, um, yeah, it's been fine. It has been fine. I love these little adapters that they made for this, and I like the way that you know, the adapters and jigs that I've made can fit on here so easily. It's not a hard machine to work with. Once you get the hang of uh, how to use it, then you start realizing what all it can do, and that's when you can really start to uh, get some nice stuff out of it. Uh, even from the very beginning, except for the problem I had with the nails, even from the very beginning, this thing was cutting nice true lumber. And at the end, it still is cutting nice true lumber. I mean, a year later. So I'm going to be putting some red oak on here today and just to do a little bit of cutting there. But that's the, that's the one-year review. Nothing more I can tell you. I'm happy with the size of the gas tank. I mean, that works fine. It'll last me, you know, a couple of days because I'm not running it, you know, totally uh, all out. Um, the part about the uh, loosening the tension at night, I feel that that is necessary to take the tension off the blade every night. 
So sometimes I find myself, you know, sitting in a lounge chair for the day thinking, wow, this is, I feel, you know, nice and relaxed. Oh crap, I forgot to take the tension off the blade. So my wife has a little note over there and she also says to me to take the tension off when I walk in. So we work together at that. I do feel that that's an important issue that should be addressed. I, I, I think that it should be made, made known that the tension should be taken off the blade. And you know, for those of you who may want to argue with that, come on, it's, it's, how long is it going to take me? Okay, what'd that, what'd that take, a second and a half? That's all there is to it. At the end of the day, just take and turn it off, <coughs> or take it off. So, other than that, I don't have a problem with it. I've gotten some, uh, I still get comments about <coughs> the sawdust being on this side of the mill. I'm going to tell you something. At my age, my feet hurt me sometimes, and they hurt me pretty bad. As far as I'm concerned, that sawdust makes me feel a whole lot better walking on that than it does the concrete, and I don't mind it being there. I certainly don't mind shoveling it up. It makes you aware of what you're up against, and uh, I don't have a problem with that. So, you know, they, they, they have other things you can put on here. I don't want anything bigger on here. I don't want to put a bucket on here because if I put a bucket on, I'm going to have to be emptying the bucket every pass. I don't want that. I'd rather just deal with the wood as it piles up, up the sawdust. And it's easy to do with a big snow shovel because the sawdust is light. Again, nothing has had to be adjusted. I have changed the motor oil. I need to change that gas filter. For some reason, this number on here, they can't seem to find that number in their book at Napa but i got to do something about the gas filter. I think it could probably take almost any kind. But anyway, the, the air filter or the air cleaner change that motor oil. And I would say that you're good to go with these things. Oh, I just want to put a little bit of oil on that sliding guide arm over there. Yeah, so what I, what I was saying here before is it keeps it has a nice crumbed looking finish and it seems to keep it but I think a little bit of oil on there if you run that through a couple times it helps it to uh, to move better and the thing is is you do want that guide arm tight because think about it it is you know riding the bearing there so it's a little bit better with the oil on it but Nonetheless, it's nothing to complain about because once you get going with this thing, you know, you're especially when you start using all your muscles, the next thing you know, you're grabbing a hold of stuff and doing things that you didn't even think you could do anymore. Oh, as far as cleaning these little pulley out here, all I did was put, I actually took the end of the adjustable wrench, opened up the jaw, held it in there, and pushed it two feet, it was clean. Not a big deal. I mean, this thing is user friendly in every way that you can think of. I really like this sawmill. I, I'm so glad that I bought it. If I would have known what you could could do with this type of a mill, I'd have bought one years ago. I just never really looked into it. Never thought that it would uh, be a big help to me, but it is. So, you know, I fulfilled the thing that I wanted to fulfill with it, which was to get myself um, all the molding for the house up there. So this year coming up, I'll be working on the house a lot, but once I start to do sawing again, what I want to do is start to do some advertising and see if I can't get some people to bring their logs here to get cut up. But other than that, it's uh, been, been great. I had said last year that this concrete pad would not uh, crack, and it hasn't. I have rebar and stuff in there and also mesh. And there's a six, it's a six inch floating slab on 2B stone. And it's just been doing fine. I mean, you can tell by the leveling of the bed how good it is. So I would make sure you keep all that stuff level. And le as far as leveling the bed goes, all that is is a matter of bending down once, a, once in a while and look across all the bunks and make sure you can see the top of every one touching, you know, where your line of sight would be. Other than that, blow it off now and then and you'll be in good shape. So guys, I also want to thank you for watching for the past year. 
been a good year for um, for me making videos as far as uh, I love the comments and stuff on them um, it's uh, you make a lot of friends and you know you may not know the people or what they look like and it doesn't really matter I mean just you can always tell how when some, you can get to the point where you can tell in their wording that they're joking or you know they're asking a serious question I enjoy that okay guys so that's about it. I'm just going to take these little wipers off and put some transmission fluid on them. And that will be the end of my one year um, review. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, guys, I decided to show you this. Um, this wiper goes on here like that. And there's a bolt here. It goes in here. And there's one down at the other end. Um, the wiper is a felt, it's a piece of felt, okay, originally it looked like they had glued it to the paint but it didn't stay, and it doesn't matter because it does stay in place once you get it in there. Um, this has a tendency to dry out fairly quickly. You would think that with automatic transmission fluid, that this, you know, and that's what this is, uh, has on it, you would think you would think that this wouldn't, uh, you know, dry up, but believe me, it does. And you want to keep this saturated with transmission fluid because the sawdust and stuff that is floating around it and all sort of pulls the transmission fluid out of it. So this helps to uh, oil the guide that the machine runs on, the, the uh, cantilever design runs on, and you do want to keep this oiled. So I'm going to clean this off with something and then I'm going to oil this and I'll put it back on there. You, want to, you also want to clean the edge of, you know, where the where this is going to sit, go where it goes. Same thing with the other ones. Um, I, I have to laugh a little bit. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but I had a, a sawmill that was about 100 years old. And this felt wicking type of technology believe it or not guys is a hundred years old but yet it still works and why throw away a good thing good idea just thought I'd add that so I'm gonna put some transmission fluid on this clean it first put transmission fluid on it and then put it back okay guys so I put the felt wipers on there put oil uh, transmission fluid on them and the long one that goes underneath here so she's ready to go and that's all there is to it I don't know what else to do to it to make it any better. So, that's about it. I, 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 I feel like I might be missing something, but I, I don't know what it would be. So, again, have a good one. One more thing, guys, I miss. There's one grease fitting right here just for this little crank here. I just call, I call that the dial or the clock, but there's a, just a little tiny grease fitting in there for that. And I also wanted to say, of all of the bolts that are on this thing, and the mill, for all intents and purposes, it's not exactly outside, but it certainly gets the temperature variance. This is the only bolt here that got rusty. All the other bolts are... Whatever they're made out of, I guess they're galvanized in this country as opposed to somewhere else and everything seems good. There's no rust on any of the bolts. Just this one little bolt here. But other than that, oh and I did have a, an issue with the uh, cage. Once I put my screws back in there, no more problems. No bolts are missing and everything stayed good. That's it. For sure. Bye.